I want to talk about metal detector discrimination. And boy, I wish someone had explained this when I first joined metal detecting so I could understand what it's all about. It's a good idea to join a club. Other people can help you explain it. But basically, some detectors just have dials. Some detectors have buttons with a, an LCD display screen. And some of the older ones have just a, a meter with numbers on it. So how does discrimination work? When, when you turn on your detector, the coil generates an electrical field, and there's some little bits of iron and copper and lead inside the soil. It, some of the f electrical field energy bounces back, and that's what we call uh, ground balance, which we're not going to discuss right now. But when you go over a coin, now the electrical field will generate a little electric current in the coin. It's called an eddy current. And this eddy current in the coin creates its own magnetic field, which is pretty much opposite in direction to the electrical field generated by the metal detector. So in effect, it pushes back on that field, and it creates what we call a phase shift. Now, the depth and the size of the coin and the quality of the coin determine how much phase shift you get. And if we look at this next dial, you can see that if, if you get something like, uh, you can almost picture this in your mind, a, a piece of junk like a piece of iron, very little phase shift, very little echo from the electrical current. And you'll get a sh phase shift uh, just, just a little bit. Um, and you'll see the dial there says things like iron and nails and pull tabs. If you get something pure like a silver dime, though, that's going to generate a stronger current and stronger field that opposes the the field from the coil, and you get a larger phase shift. Now, the metal detector can tell you uh, if that phase shift is large or small, and with fine-tuning, you can tell if it's a nickel or a dime or a quarter or just a piece of junk, and that's what that's what phase shift discrimination is all about. It distinguishes us from, distinguishes new detectors from the older ones, which just would just beep every time you found a piece of metal. So let's look at some of the um, current metal detectors. We, we're going to cover three of them: the Silver U Max, which is about two hundred twenty, two hundred fifty dollars; the Garrett H two fifty, which is about two twelve, I think, is the going price and the White's MXT, several hundred dollars. Um, you'll notice on the Silver Umax that uh, there's no display, it's just the dials. So the dials for this one, the discrimination is on the left there. And you now here's the trick for discrimination on the Silver Umax. If you set the dial to just below the five cent piece, then foil and iron will not create a beep in your detector. So if you get a signal, it could be a five cent piece, a tab, a penny, or anything of high, higher phase shift. And here's the trick. If you get a signal and you want to know if that's a tab, a pull tab, or a five cent piece, you put the dial just above the five cent piece but below the tab. Now if that signal drops out, that means you have a nickel in the ground. If the signal does not drop out, it could be a tab, a penny, or anything higher. I'll repeat that, because that's the heart of the whole thing. If you set it below five cent piece and you get a signal, it could be a five cent piece or anything higher, including the pull tabs. If you set it just above the five cent piece and that signal drops out, what you've, what you've just made drop out is a nickel. So that's how you can tell. You can tell the same thing between a tab and a penny, or a penny and a quarter, by adjusting that discrimination dial on the UMAX. That's how discrimination works, and that's the heart of it. Let's look now at the Ace Garrett Ace 250. You'll see that there are bands, and some of them are lit up in black on the LCD display, and some of them are not. You'll notice that the mode on this is set for coins. And you'll see that the black band for, for a nickel is on the left there. And then all the other coins higher 
are uh, black. That means you can pick up any any of the coins. Now, pull tabs, if you look closely, are between the nickel and the penny, and that area is notched out. That's what the notch bands are for. Now, these bands are pretty broad, so you can lose some jewelry in there when you notch out the uh, pull tabs in this coin mode. This is a pretty advanced detector because you can set the notches on or off for any of those bands. The trouble is those are fairly wide bands and you can lose jewelry sometimes. But that's the next step up in the um, ability to discriminate and it becomes very handy if you know which bands are in and out while you're detecting. Now in the MXT, the discrimination is a little more fine-tuned. Instead of having bands, they'll use numbers called VDI numbers, Visual Display Indicator Numbers, so that a quarter might be 82, and a dime might be 80, and a penny might be 72, and a clad penny might be 67. So you get a lot more detail in there, and what happens is, after a while, you get to know what numbers represent which coins. On my detector, the MXT, a nickel is almost always 18 or 20, a 37 is a pull tab, 77 to 80 is a penny or a dime, and higher than that is a quarter or, or larger coins. So let's take a... So that has a lot more detail than the Silver Umax, which just has categories. Anyway, let's take a look at how it works in practice with I'm using a white MXT and I'll show you how we set this up. Set the mode to coins and jewelry. This is the on off switch and it's also the sensitivity. Normally you put that at the triangle there about nine and a half. This is the discrimination and you can see it goes down from zero where it's nails and iron up to nickels and then pull tabs are about six there and nickels are about four. I like to keep it pretty low which is almost all metal and then the threshold. Uh, for the best sensitivity you want it to make just a little noise in your headphones. That's a little bit too loud right about there so that when you get something it uh, <clears throat> it's at its maximum sensitivity. So let's try it on some pull tabs and nickels and you can see the difference. Here's the display Just showing VDI number right now and I've got some nickels and tabs set up on a green screen so it's easy to see. Five. Tabs for me are generally around 37 right there. Here's another tab. This one's smaller. So it's coming in as 18, 20, 14. Jumping around. Uh, that jumping around is the detector's way of telling you it's not sure what it is. So let's do a nickel now and we'll see what happens. A couple things, you notice the sound is very solid and steady. So there you have it. You can see the nickel always comes up as 18 or 20 on, on my MXT. And the tool tabs always come up as 37. And that way you can know whether to dig or not, which is the biggest decision. And that's how discrimination helps. Anyway, I hope this talk has helped you. If you need more help, I written a book on the subject for beginners and like I said this is just a beginners course uh, modern detectors have gone have taken discrimination to a whole new level where it not only detects phase shift but also resistivity so you can um, fine-tune it even higher with some of the new detectors, but that's more, more of an advanced subject we won't go into today. Anyway, it's been a pleasure. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. Thank you. This is Vince.